If you have a carrier with 3G, it'll go to automatic. Don't worry about this setting down here. If you really know what you're doing, fiddle around with it, but don't wallow with it if you're a first timer. Cellular data. Now this is interesting because it gives you two options at the top. The rest of it, well, SIM pin and SIM applications, that's just like say um, if you're with Telstra, you can go to get Pocket News, which is like an email or a text message sent to your number so you can get news. Although with the wife, with the iPad, it actually doesn't receive text messages, so I'm not sure how that works, so I've never actually tried it. It costs you 25 cents per Pocket News, so I'm not really going to get do it because it's a waste of money. You've got SIM pin, which is if you want to lock your SIM. Now that's pretty... You don't really bother with that because you can lock your iPad, you don't need to lock your SIM. APN settings, not sure what that is, but I will get back to you on that, hopefully. And you got, now these two are the main ones you got. If you want to turn off cellular data, you just go turn it off, so, and it will just, it won't connect to anything like 3G. So I think so, I'll leave that on because I actually will be going to get 3G network soon. And then we've got data roaming. Now, for those who actually don't know what data roaming is, data roaming is when you are on one designated network. Now, normally Telstra is the main one in Australia, which covers most of the country. But let's say you go into an area where Telstra doesn't reach, which is highly unlikely, and you go and say Optus region. Now, if you turn data roaming off, it will not connect to the 3G network. It'll actually say that it can't connect. But if you turn data roaming on, it will actually sync up to the Optus network. But it will cost you more. So data roaming is only if you really need to get the internet or any reception whatsoever. I recommend that you keep it off because you may actually go somewhere and it will actually charge you a lot more and you'll go through your download a lot quicker and we don't want that. So anyway, notifications. This is just to say, you know, say like a, there's a new update for comics, it'll tell me, like say if I got a new comic book subscription that came through, it says you've got your new comic book is in, go and download it, and so on and so forth. It's pretty much like the mail icon which will project a little one in the corner saying you've got one new mail. So that so that's just for mostly games and applications. And you don't and you'll probably learn that as you go along. Down here, now you have your options for apps. Now sorry but I can't show you it fully. Maybe back it off a bit. Unfortunately as you back it off a bit it gets smaller. So you have air video, I'll show you air video later, and these are pretty much just all the settings, so Let's go to Cannabolt. Now Cannibal gives you all the settings for the game. So if I want to say turn the music volume down, I turn the music volume down and it'll play the music level down. Now the reason why they did this is because Cannabolt is pretty much so you start playing and you just tap. There's no real option setting within the game. So they actually put the options under the settings tab, settings application. You've got Flipboard, which I'll show you later iBooks, Pages, Shazam, Twitterific, and all that. Now, I can go into greater depth, but I'm not going to because this is already a 16 minute long and it's taking me 16 minutes to get through all this, so let's just get moving on to the next stuff. Alright, now, you'll, I'm not sure if I said this, so I'm pretty much repeating myself every step of the way. My home screen is set up a lot differently to the factory default. I, you can actually reset it to the factory default, but I like it this way because I need, like, it's just the way I do things because it's actually how I check. I check the news, YouTube account, and calendar. So, yes. All right, now, here we have Flipboard. Now, Flipboard is a favorite application of mine. It's There's actually a lot of things that are alternative to Flipboard and a lot better, but they're not free. And also, once Flipboard gets, go Flipboard gets going, it actually gets really good. So let's open it up. Now it'll actually start portraying news. Like say, this one is a Porsche Greenlight's 918 hybrid car, or supercar. And this is actually by Wired, top stories. So let's go across, and you've got nine tabs. Now since it only has nine tabs there, it's a shame because you could actually be a lot better if you had more, but still. So you have pretty much like say, cool hunting, which is like for style and whatnot. Good, which is I'm not exactly sure what good is. Flip news, which is just news and everything. What's hot and news? And... Got why, which is all about technology. So if you know, if you live in Australia and you know the popular magazine Wide, Flip Tech, which is 
pretty much the same as wired but it's by flip board flip music flip, it's pretty self-explanatory flip gaming and you got twitter and a facebook now you'll notice when you first get flipboard if you do that facebook and twitter don't connect automatically in fact it takes a little bit over a week because they've got to process everyone and connect the accounts to the application i'm not sure why it takes a week but that's how long it took me maybe it'll be getting faster as it gets better but you know anyway so what flipboard has done is it's presented facebook updates and status updates and all the like as a how you, like a like a magazine. So if I want to see that, you just flip the page, and you go to the next thing. Go back, and if you want to go to look at a picture or an article, you just tap on it. And if you look at a picture, you just tap on it again. And yeah, this is a photo I added about 12 hours ago, just for this purpose, which is uh, the napkin from McLaren's Irish Pub from the hit TV sitcom How I Met Your Mother. There are 50 reasons to have sex, which is actually quite funny, but not actually the point. So yeah, so yeah, it's pretty much just like that. You just flip through the pages, and if you want to comment on something, you just click on it. There you go. And if you want to type a reply to it, you go down to the corner here. If you can see my finger, it's, it's down there. And it says type your reply, and you type your reply, and you can comment on it. So it saves you having to open up Safari and go to thing. So alright, so that's a very overview of that. And Twitter, exactly the same thing send in a magazine format if you want to comment or reference something you just follow the prompts. <clears throat> oh wow I'm really getting thirsty. Alright I'm going to take a short break. I'll be back in 30-40 seconds. Alright I'm back and I'm feeling a bit more refreshed. Alright now moving on now we have pages here. Now pages is a word docu documentation so if you want to make word documents on the fly you pretty much just open pages up and you get your saved works and anything else. So this is already something that I've been working on earlier. This is an idea for another video. It's not important. Um, so yeah, it actually looks like a real word document except you just type it up with your fingers. So if I want to make an uh, addition, just tap and the keyboard comes up and you've got a whole setting. Now this application will cost you around $13. Um, if you actually want to do Word app documents on the iPad, I would recommend it. Although, if you actually want to do general writing of notes, don't bother because the notes application on the iPad that comes pre-installed is actually pretty good as well. So it'll cover that quite well. Now let's see if I want to email this. I just go down to here. So you can share, send via mail, share via iWork, and export. So it's pretty standard. If you want to make a new one, click down here so you can new document or duplicate document go to that and if you want to delete it you just pretty much hit the trash bin and delete document now say I want to open up a new document now what iPad actually gives you is a whole list of things so if you want to make a formal letter, classic letter, modern letter a resume, a proposal, a poster, a syllabus term paper, party invite, recipe, flyer all sorts of things and it's probably about 16 diff different style documents that you get as a set standard. I'm not sure if you can add to it, but if you could, it'd be pretty cool. Alright, now, notes, I've already told you about this, is similar to um, pages, but it's more set in a note format. So you just go to the, each note you want to do, and pretty much, yeah. Then this is actually my birthday wish list, you know, what I want for my birthday. It's a big list. And if I want to make a change to it, do that. Although if you actually have a good eye, you might notice that I want some very odd D DVDs. I'm addicted to Wizards of Waverly Place. I can't, and I'm not afraid to say it. All right. Now you might notice this icon here. You won't find this icon anywhere in the App Store because you've actually got to get it from Telstra. It's the Telstra My Account. Now it's only accessible through the 3G network, so if you try to access it via Wi-Fi, it's not going to work for you. So, let's just keep something to keep in mind. It'll actually, when you first sign up to get a, sorry, when you get a 3G SIM card or micro SIM for the iPad, it'll actually tell you how to get this, so don't worry about it. Um, I'm not sure what other carriers do, so I can't tell you, but 
there's probably a lot of forums out there that will help you, so don't be afraid to go out and actually have a look to see what you can find. The iBooks application. Now that is quite brilliant. I've read a lot of books, and I've actually finally found books that I haven't read in years. All right. Now, since my computer had a bit of a brain fart, it kind of just unsynced all my books, so I've got to resync them all. So, But I have recently downloaded this one just for the purpose of this. It's The Three Musketeers. Now, it's just the whole page set up. If you want to have a preview of the next page, you just touch the top of this. <sighs> Come on, do it. Well, yeah, that's pretty much. You just flick the page to turn it. If you want to have a preview of the next page, you can like slowly drag the corner down like that. See? You can just do that. Let it flick back up and like that. Now, down the bottom, you see that? There's a little brown box right here. That is to, you know, scroll all the way back. Scroll away for what it'll tell you the details, the name of the chapter that you're in, and the number of the chapter and the page number. So let's go back to the page one. And it'll take you back to page one. Flick through and yep. Now contents page, instead of having to actually turn to the individual chapters, you just simply click on it. Oh tap it, sorry. And there you go. And that's pretty much iBooks. Well that's an iBook book. So let's go to store. Store at the moment for Australia is actually very lacking. It's that's the why um, iBooks will have gotten such a bad rep reputation. I mean, if you want to read the classics, great. But if you want to read something a little bit more current that wasn't written over a hundred years ago, you might be out of luck. So I would recommend you buy the Kindle application until Apple gets their act in order. So you got all free books, and if you want to download, they're all free at the moment. So go nuts. So you simply just tap it. And it'll say get book, tap that, and it'll take you back to the library and ask you for your thing. But since I don't want to download that book, I'm not a big Jane Austen fan, so I won't get it. So, alright, that's iBooks, that's a general overview. Alright, I've already showed you settings, pages, iBooks, flipboard, calendars, fairly explanatory. So you can pretty much figure that out by yourself. Well, I'll actually show you how to add a minute. So, yeah, you've got this. Got your calendar up here, your sort of a logbook here event of events. If you want to add an event, you click the plus button down in the bottom right corner, and it'll give you a little option thing here. So that's pretty much it. If you want to go to day, week view, month, and a list, which is that. Probably should get rid of that, because that's an old thing. And yeah, that's. Well, that's pretty much all you can say with that, actually. A lot of the things you actually have to do on the iPad, you have to learn by doing, because I can't show you how to do it properly, because I don't have the time, and also because <laughs> this video is already very big. 74.7 megabytes, so going to have to edit it down a bit. Anyway, so, you have contacts here, which actually, something that you might notice is, when you first get it, is when you actually turn the contacts like that, it kind of goes bit weird. You actually have two big black strips at the top, see, and at the bottom, which is one of the, I think it's a fault, like a design fault, but I guess it was intentional, I hope. Try to get the position back. Alright, so, yep, that's me. Hello, how you doing? Got my email address down here and everything. Hopefully you can't see that, otherwise I'll be getting spam. So yeah, um, YouTube is fairly explanatory. You touch the videos you want to play. Um, if you want to sign into an account, you go to My Videos. 